Hello, I'd like to talk to you today about the Cup of Blessing and Redemption, and this is the second part in the series on Passover. Now, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verse 20, it says, In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Now, after he took this cup, he shared it around and they all had a drink of the cup. Now, there are four cups in Passover, but there's one particular cup that's taken just after they've eaten the meal. It's called the cup of blessing and redemption. So why is it the cup of blessing and redemption? Well, the answer is clear. Back in Egypt, when Israel were in slavery to Pharaoh, and he was a cruel, oppressive leader, they had to have a Passover meal. So you might recall that they sent that uh, God sent ten plagues. Now there's things like flies. There was things like the plagues of um, frogs. There was the locusts. All these other plagues came through. Now none of those plagues affected the people of Israel, but they went through the land of Egypt. But the tenth plague was different. It was the plague of death. Now you might recall that they had to celebrate Passover, and part of that was that they had to get a lamb, they had to slaughter it in the evening, and then they had to take its blood and apply the blood to the doorposts and the lentil of the door, the front door of their house. Now, they were promised that if they did that, that they would be safe, that death would pass them over, and that they would be kept alive and spared. Now, this death was the death of the firstborn. In the plagues, God had judged all the gods of Egypt. But one of the big gods that they really worshipped was Pharaoh. So it was really human government. It was the government of kings. They worshipped the king. So in other words, God was going to put a judgment to that. Now, Pharaoh is a type of the God of this world. He's cruel, oppressive. And like with Adam at the snake with uh, the Garden of Eden, when he took that apple, the promise was that he had greater knowledge. But the reality was he just died spiritually. So it is with the cruel oppressor of this world. He made promises. We died spiritually. And that was our inheritance from him. Now, the firstborn represents an inheritance. So by taking away the firstborn, God was taking away that inheritance because they always passed down their inheritance through the firstborn. But we have a different inheritance. Our inheritance is through Christ. And Christ's inheritance is different. He's given us life, abundant life. And that's really what it's all about. So that's why the firstborn had to die. It was a type and shadow of the fact that the firstborn of Adam, our inheritance was death. But the firstborn of Jesus, the Lamb of God, our inheritance is life in him. Now, just as much as they had to apply the blood of the Lamb to the doorposts and the lentil. So too, when we accept Christ, it's been applied to our hearts. Now, some say when they put that blood there on the lentil, that as it dripped down and as it put it to the sides, it made the sign of the cross. So really what we're saying here is when Jesus died upon that cross, he's the blood of, and his blood was shed, he is the lamb that was slain, that his blood also, and we accept him, is applied to our heart. So we've come to him through the death on the cross and through his blood. Now, in the Old Testament, the blood just simply cleansed. It just covered the sin. It didn't really deal with it because they were looking to the future. They were looking to something better. But when Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood, it was complete. It has completely washed away our sin. That's the difference between the old and the new. One was looking towards the future and it had an expectant hope. And what we have in Christ is we look back to what he did upon the cross and we receive what he's already done for us. So there you go. So that's what it's all about. Now, there were 10 plagues. 10 represents completion. The only one who can complete and can fulfill the law, because remember, the law also represents 10, was Jesus. He's the only one who could do it. He said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, that he's come not to do away with the law, but simply to fulfill it. He makes it complete, and only he could do it. So by coming through that 10th plague, the only one who could make it complete, who could fulfill that law, was the Lamb of God, and that was Jesus. So there you go. That's the mystery of the cup of blessing and redemption. And I hope that's blessed you. God bless, and bye for now.